Hello, welcome to Plural Sight and to this course on Linux Systems Programming. I'm Dr Chris Brown and this module is called Accessing Files. In this module I'm going to start by talking about the low-level unbuffered system calls that give us sequential access to data in a file. Then we'll look at seeking into a file to give us random access. Next We'll look at the buffered I.O. and formatted I.O. routines that, strictly speaking, aren't actually system calls, but are rather part of the standard C library. We'll take a brief look at a couple of more advanced techniques, scatter, gather I.O. and memory mapping. And along the way, our demos will include no less than four ways of copying a file. Now, the first four system calls that we're going to meet, open, close, read and write, really do form the heart of file I.O. in Linux. They are at a very low level, and short of crawling out over the disk with some sort of tiny magnet, these system calls are really the lowest level of doing file I.O. in Linux. We begin by opening a file. The first argument to open is a string. It's the relative or absolute path name of the file that we want to open. The second argument, the flags argument, specifies whether we want to open the file for reading or for writing or both. And there are additional flags you can specify to say whether we want to append to the file, uh, to create it if it doesn't exist, or to truncate it down to zero length if it does exist. Uh, the mode, which is only a relevance if the file is being created, is typically specified as an octal constant and it specifies the read, write and execute permissions that will be given to the file. As you may know, the actual permissions that the file will get will be limited by the umask of the process. Now, we can predict that the value we'll get back from our first open call will be 3. Where do I get this apparently random number from? Well, you're guaranteed to get the lowest available descriptor. And when the program is started, it will almost certainly have descriptors 0, 1 and 2 already open. These represent the program's standard input, which is typically connected to the keyboard, and its standard output, file descriptor 1, and its standard error, descriptor 2, which are typically connected to the screen, or in Linux speak to the TTY device. Now, as you probably know, these streams can be redirected by the shell before the program is run, but the program will not, in general, be aware of these redirections. Now, we saw some symbolic constants used in the open call for the flags argument, and they can be used in the mode argument as well, come to that. And in some cases, these symbolic constants are intended to be bitwise ORed together. They're defined to be single bit values so that you can combine them. You see that happening here. The vertical bar operator here is not the pipe. Um, it's C's bitwise OR operator. Now, once we've got a file open, uh, we can write to it, specifying the open file descriptor a pointer to the buffer where the data is held, and a count specifying the size of the buffer. Don't specify a length that's longer than the buffer. The compiler won't complain, but at runtime you'll either get a memory violation or you'll end up writing out whatever happens to follow the buffer in memory. There's no format conversion going on here and no user space buffering. It's just raw binary output. Now, input works similarly using read. Again, we need a, an open file descriptor. And again, this is just raw binary data transfer into a specified buffer with a specified length. Again, it's vital that the count you specify isn't bigger than the buffer. Now, read returns the number of bytes that it actually read. Uh, for example, if we're reading a file that contains uh, 600 bytes and we repeatedly request 500 bytes, the first read will return 500, the second will return 100 because that's all that's left, and the third one will return 0 to indicate that we are at the end of the file. 
Once you're finished with the descriptor, uh, you should call close on it, uh, specifying just the, the open file descriptor. This closes the descriptor and makes it available for reuse. Now, descriptors are implicitly closed when a process terminates, but closing them is good practice. It's also essential in a long-running program, like maybe some kind of server or a shell, uh, because there is a finite limit on how many descriptors a process can have open, and you will eventually run out.